Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today we would be talking about the bad guys. Yes, these are the bad guys found in almost every society. So this movie talks about five characters, wolf, piranha, snake, spider and shark. But let me make one thing very very clear that this movie is not intended for children. The children might understand or like the adverts, the characters, the way they speak, but what lies behind the dialogues is only understandable if you are 18 plus or you have some knowledge about the social structures. So if you're familiar with what personification is, it is going to be quite easier for you to understand this video. But if you don't understand personification, I would definitely recommend you to go and read personification and get back to my video. What do you see here? Well, that's obvious. What if I say the wolf is a common man struggling to find his place? Snake is the injustice in our social structure. Shark is a deception that masks our social structures. Spider is a tech freak. Pirama is a mental illness that prevails our society. Would you believe me? Most important of them all, Professor Marmalade is a noble savage. Do you see those realities behind such personification? It's very clear that unlike other animated movies, Bad Guys is intended for the thinkers above the children's intellect. Your kids would only love the funny scenes or characters, their outfits or way of talking. They would see how the story goes. Trust me, this movie is not intended for children. It unfolds the ugly realities of our political and social structures and tells us how we are used to being bad guys and take it as a new normal. Well, that's how it goes. Is that simple? Although apparently, it's a simple story of five characters shown as bad guys, being manipulated, framed and used for personal benefit of a cute, fluffy guinea pig. But trust me, it's not that simple. What happens in the end, the bad guys become the good guys. Well, I'm sorry, this is not how it always works. This movie shows the alleged workings of our social and political structures behind the curtains and those who resist or stand for themselves are called bad guys. The characters that you see in the movie are not just animals but personification of social and political constituents. The wolf represents stereotypes that are followed as they are written in the books. Our literature portrays some practices as evil and we are tuned to accept those as standards. Why don't we question what's happening around us? The wolf is always a bad guy. Take for instance Red Riding Hood and the kids rhyme Huff and Puff. Have you ever seen wolf as a good guy? Likewise, some races, some ethnic groups or even communities are always termed bad before they even do something bad. This is what drives them to do bad. What difference does it make anyway? Let's talk about snake fighting over a push pop. The funny part is, it's always one push pop in the fridge. What connotations or should I say stereotypes are attached with snake? It is cunning, deceptive and always smacks you when you don't know he's going to. We never bother that apart from its instinct to attack when in danger or hungry, it's just a reptile, not a deadly, dangerous or anonymous reptile, just a reptile. The rustics in our society are struggling to earn just one push pop that makes them feel better for a moment. The push pop What makes such communities social outcasts is the recurrent rejection by the noble savages or white collar people. We don't bother what made our neighbor a drug addict or a loner wolf who doesn't let people in and always craves an extinct or banned push pop. I seriously laughed when I saw a shark at the party. No one noticed his fin or jaws. He became a she, not even the police officer could identify him. The man saw the white moustache and ignored his fin and voice. 
calling him his father. He was so happy to see his father being nice to him. That's what he craved the most. Whoa, it's a huge blow on the face of family institutions and security systems. People find it funny to deceive people and bypass the predefined limits. What's befooled and mocked the most are the communication gap and security loops. Piranha was a little confusing for me to understand. He represents the fanatics around us, people who find fun in the deadliest words. Should I remind you of Jackus? He's funny, outspoken, and has a pinch of rebellion in his personality. He only follows what others do, good or bad. Webs is a spider and a tech geek. She even fails to understand how Meteorite works and a little fluffy looking creature intends to gain mind control with its psychokinetic energy. It's a disclaimer, the tech lovers might not agree, but do you know Elon Musk, Zuckerberg and Bill Gates? Let's come to that after a while. So Marmalade gets to know that the meteorite emits frequency that can be used to gain mind control over the same species, guinea pigs. People love it as a pet. Do you see this pattern in political structures? It's an amalgamation of political and tech control that works together. The noble savages like Marmalade or should I say our elite techno freaks align with the political bodies to conduct the experiments and these are always hidden from the eyes of the layman. Later on this experimentation is resisted by the noble savages themselves because they know by allying with tech freaks that such experiments can gain mind control. Isn't that what's happening? Just as God in the Bible designs and creates animals and plants and humans according to his wishes, now we are learning how to design and create life. You need completely new ideologies, completely new religions, and they are likely to emerge from Silicon Valley or from Bangalore and not from uh, uh, the Middle East. And they are likely to, pro to give people visions based on technology. Everything that the old religions promised, uh, happiness and justice and even eternal life, but here on earth with the help of technology and not after death with the help of some supernatural being. What are humans for? As far as we know, for nothing. I mean, there is, <laughs> there is no great cosmic drama. One some great... that some people talk about is that um, only a catastrophe can shake humankind and uh, open the, the path to a real system of global governance. And they say that we can't do it before the catastrophe, but we need to start laying the foundations so that when the disasters strike, we can react quickly. So the next step is we turn our gaze inwards and we say, OK, um, gaining control of the world outside us did not really make us satisfied. Let's now try to gain control of the world inside us. This is the big, really big project of science and technology and industry in the 21st century will be to try and gain control of the world inside us, mm. to learn how to engineer and produce bodies and brains and minds. These are likely to be the main products of the 21st century economy. We have all this still myth of free will, that everything we choose is of our own free will. And this is a myth that served us well for a couple of centuries, but now it's becoming dangerous. Now, why is we... data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, 
but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. People could look back in a hundred years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin, which I think is maybe the most important development of the 21st century, is this ability to hack human beings, to go under the skin, collect biometric data, analyze it and understand people better than they understand themselves. This, I believe, is maybe the most important event of the 21st century. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life. With COVID outbreak, vaccines were introduced and later social distancing was enforced. People were given shapes or bands to be tagged as vaccinated. Their locations and activities were traced. What do you call this? Isn't it gaining control of your body and mind? Scaring you to death that COVID won't spare you if you go out and if you don't get vaccinated, you might kill your beloveds. I won't stop to mention the chip experiment on a pig by our legendary Elon Musk. The pig was supposed to outperform its instincts with the promise that the chip would be used for restoring the memory of a dead person in future. If you don't know that they are producing artificial meat to be consumed on Mars, where are the babies now who can crack the systems and can bypass their protocols? Let's not leave the governor. After all, a wolf and a fox are not that different. She represents the respectable class who convert from bad to good guys and never tell people. So we know that even though someone is good, he must have been a snake, shark or wolf at some point of time. So their robbery is not all about self-loathing or guilt. These sociopaths or should I say diabolical remorseless predators are the common men who are found guilty of extortion and theft because the nobles, the tech geeks and political bodies manipulate, violate human rights and oversee them fighting over a butt-shaped meteorite.